Okay, we're going to do an oil change on this 2015 Harley-Davidson Ultra Limited. Um, some of the things you may need are going to include an oil filter wrench, the Derby cover adapter to uh, put fluid in your primary. You got some blue thread locker, you have some Teflon sealant, you got a gasket kit that includes all three of the O-rings plus your Derby cover gasket. Um, a ratchet, a uh, 5.8 socket, oil drain, your oil filter, your oil. I use Mobile One, your V-Twin. You can use whatever you like. You can use Sin 3. You can use regular stuff, whatever, whatever floats your boat. Use it. Um, this is Harley's original Formula Plus. This is the transmission and primary chain lubricant. Um, I agree with them on the primary part of it. It needs to not be synthetic for the primary because I feel like synthetic is too slippery to be in the primary. You want it to actually get onto the fibers of the clutch disc and not slip where it's applying between clutch and um, the steels. I prefer conventional oil grabs a little bit better. Um, this is something new. Harley's finally come out with a, uh, a gear oil, heavy synthetic. It's uh, an 8140, which this is interesting because they always said before, oh no, you can use the um, either Sen3, which I think is way too light, or you could use the Formula Plus, which I think is the wrong application for it. I think in a, down here in your transmission, you want something that's got, it's more viscous, it's gonna be thicker, it's gonna hold up, especially I ride in the Central Valley and of California, and um, it's hot. Okay, so, we're gonna start. Oh, first thing I noticed, hmm. Seems like I've been hitting those roads a little too hard. Okay, so underneath here, this is our sump. Um, right here, this is the, it's a 5.8. I'm gonna put it on there. Yeah, there it goes. Hold on, this is silly. Barely dribbling. We're gonna take, right up here is our oil fill cap. We're gonna take that off and watch what happens. Ah, now we got a little gravity. Okay, I'm not gonna take it all the way out. I'm just gonna loosen it up and leave it on top there. So, we'll let this do its magic and we'll work on the oil filter side. Something else we do, we're gonna prep our oil filter. So. Okay, so what I like to do is oops, put a little bit of oil in there and put a little bit here, let it soak in. What we're doing is we're preloading the filter, getting oil inside everything so that when we go to start it up, it's not going to be A, start for oil, and B, you're not going to have a big drop in the oil level when you, go to, when you first go to do it. You can kind of see, if you look down, let's see if I can catch this here. Um, I don't know if you can see it or not, but anyways, if you look down the side there though, you can see the level and the media will start wicking all that oil in. So anyways, you can do it. Oil filter, which is in the front of the engine down here. I stuffed some rags underneath it to try to help contain the mess. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my oil filter wrench here and it just goes inside and on and we take it off. Now, once we got it loose, I'm just gonna reach in here real quick and spin it. And it's gonna be leaking. Tilt it up or tilt it down, tilt the back end down so that it comes out like this. So we're not losing as much oil And yeah, it's still dripping, but not nearly as bad as it could be. So, and then we'll put the new oil filter on. Okay, so we see we're about done dripping there. So we're gonna take our oil filter, the new one, take a little bit of the oil that you might have here, apply a light, light coating on here. This just to help keep it from sticking and to allow it to glide on there. Again, same plan. I'm gonna put this in. Oops. And line her up, spin it on. 
pull these rags out. Uh, just to make sure I don't get anything pinched in there. Okay, now, here, hold on just a second here. Okay, you're gonna feel it right about there. It's making contact. We need to go half, half to three quarters of a turn more. So give me just a second. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use this as my marker. I'm gonna put it in here and you can see where it is there. And I'm just gonna turn it until I get there, about there. And there we go. And that's on. So now we'll go under, we will prep the drain plug and get that put back in place. Right. Drain plug, um, remove the old O-ring. Got this, I'm just putting a little bit of oil on it. Now what we wanna do is just take this guy and lightly, just kind of, oops. <laughs> now that I got, doing this one hand is not nearly as easy it might seem. What I was saying is just lightly roll it on there. Now I applied a dab of some thread sealer. I'm gonna wipe that on there, and I'm gonna reinstall, clean the clean the, um, the drain pan section again, and then I'm gonna install this and torque it to specs. Look in your factory assembly manual for the appropriate specs for your bike. Okay, so can we get it? There we go. Okay, so that's all cleaned up, and it's right there. It's back in. Okay, now next we have under here. Right up in here is the same. It's gonna be the same one. This is gonna be your transmission drain. And I'm gonna stop this. You guys get the idea. Unscrew it, put the pan under it, pull the drain plug out, let it drain. So I'm gonna go with that next. One trick I will offer you is I put the drain pan under it and I just use the socket. Socket's gonna, there it goes. Socket's gonna catch it, so not nearly as disgusting and messy as it could be. <laughs> um, this is the transmission drain, it takes three, it's Allen. I didn't mention that. Same thing as I did mention the Torx fittings on the Derby cover, we'll cover that when we get to it. Anyways, you take that out, that'll allow the vacuum to release. More to drain out, lather, rinse, repeat. Um, since it's done dripping, wipe the area clean, put your now prepped now prepped uh, drain plug back in place and tighten it back up. For our third hole, it's right here. Same thing, 5 eighths. You guys know the drill. Um, one thing I did forget to mention, this is a, let's see if, I don't know if I can get in here or not. Anyways, this is a Torx fitting. It's a T27. This is uh, what you need to remove the screws on the Derby. Oops, come on, get on there. There it goes. Um, on these little star fittings, the Torx fittings, so it's what you need to remove it. So I'm gonna go ahead and let this drain take the side cover off. Primary, I use this little funnel here, Harley sells. Um, they're handy, they work. I have trouble getting past, uh, I mean, there's not a lot of room to get inside the clutch. You need a little tiny funnel down there. So this little little guy snaps right in there, it works pretty good. Um, this thing takes 38 ounces. So we start out with a quart, which is gonna be 32. Let's see, glug, glug, glug. And you notice, knock on wood, it's not coming out. Um, okay, so we take that, and then on this guy here, we got just a skosh over, well, I'm not holding it level here, but anyways, it's just a skosh over seven ounces. So, I'm, uh, I'm going to take and pour most, I'm sorry, most of it in here. Let's see how much we have left now. Oh, it's pretty doggone close. So, let's see here. Yeah, it might take, it might take just a touch more. Okay, so anyways, um, yeah, and just like that, we're done. Next thing we do is we add our new gasket onto the back of the derby or the clutch inspection cover. I've already wiped this off, cleaned all the old stuff off it, but um, 
it's pretty simple. Just pop it in, and then we'll take and we'll use our Torx fittings here. Let's see. Okay, yeah, this is a T27. It's a Torx fitting. Make sure you use a T27, not something else. Don't use an Allen wrench or something. You're going to round it off, screw it up, and then you're going to be pissed off. And uh, paying money. So, yeah, let's see if I can get a better shot of this guy now. There it goes. You can see the flutes on it. Yeah, so it's T27. Anyways, um, I'm going to do that, and uh, I'll be back. Okay, so I start out. I put this one in first, and I hang the derby cover on there. Not tight. Just put it on enough that it's going to hold the derby in place. Then go through. You apply one here, one here, one here, one here. This is a star pattern. This is how we do it. Don't do this. No. Star pattern. Ding, 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 ding. If you prefer here, 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 whatever. You know how to make a five-point star. So do that. The next important thing is once I got everything just lightly, everything's snug down at this point. So what I'm going to do is, uh, here we go, take this guy off, put it on my torque wrench. This is an inch pound not foot pound torque wrench. Don't go in there trying to freaking ham fist these things. Um, so I will start and the same thing. It'll be a star pattern as we tighten it. Let's see if I can do this one handed or not. But Okay, right there, stop. That is, on this one, it's set between 84 and 100 and, what is it, 84 and 108. I set it for 95. So, let's go through, do your pattern all the way around, tink, 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 tink. Put a little blue Loctite on each one also, and that way you'll have a distortion-free Titan cover. It's on. Um, the whole purpose in this thing when I started out was to clean it, because this poor thing is just disgustingly dirty because I ride it and I haven't cleaned it a lot and it's, the weather hasn't been the greatest and I ride a lot and basically I'm just being lazy. Um, the other thing I forgot to mention were underneath here, your three drain plugs. Those are, uh, I want to say like 17 to 21 foot pounds. So I said like 19 foot pounds. So remember that's foot pounds, inch pounds on these. You try putting 95 foot pounds on these, you're going to break them. Come on, use your head. Okay, something I want to show you. Notice that the add and full marks, there's a very small tolerance on this. This is 3.8 Allen, by the way. Um, this is for the transmissions, a very small tolerance area. It says that it takes 28 ounces. So one quart is 32. So we're going to take it down to the four ounce mark on the side here. I'm, I'm going to turn off the video because I need to pay attention to what I'm doing here. But anyways, yeah, we're going to get it down to four ounces so we'll put exactly 28 in so we just rested it on the top right here take it out and let's see if we can I don't know if that's focusing or not but anyways you can see it comes right up to the top of the full mark right there so we're good okay so let's see if i can get this thing to focus on this i hope it is um there's two levels there's the upper, the top, sorry, the top level up here, which is hot on the jiffy stand. And then there's the lower level, which goes up higher, which is hot standing upright. So either way, you need to have the bike fired up, let it run for a minute, get it warm, shut it off. Then this thing also says on there to check with it screwed in. So you're gonna pull it out you wipe it off and put it in screw it all the way in pull it back out and read the level don't overfill these um i've heard a lot of people complaining about um, blowing oil out of the air breather and so what happens when they're overfilled so anyways um i'm gonna go through this process and then we'll check it out so as you can see the oil level comes right up to the hot on uh, the jiffy stand side so i hope you like this video if you do give me a thumbs up uh, give me a subscribe um Take your bike out, clean it up, ride it, enjoy. Thanks a lot. Bye.